Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my new tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be running over some basic Sony Vegas setup tips. And I'll also show you some basic editing for anyone who's just learning Sony Vegas. So I've reset my Sony Vegas layout to default. This is what yours should look like as soon as you open it. I'm using Sony Vegas Pro 9. It may be slightly different for the version that you're using. However, it's mostly the same. Now, I like to customize my layout because there's certain things that I never use and certain things that I don't need. To start things off, we can clear some of these windows out and replace them with space needed for other more important windows that we can use. So to start things off, I don't ever use the master volume window. So pretty much all that does is controls the volume of your whole project. Now I just control my volume via layers and I never use this. So you can go ahead and cross that off if you don't think you'll ever use it. Now I'm not sure what this middle one is, I've never used it before and I don't think I ever will, so I'll just go and close that off. Now we're left with this, three basic windows. This window here is the preview screen. This will show your project as far as it is in the timeline and it will preview it on this screen. This down here is your timeline. All of the clips and music clips that you insert will appear down here. You can arrange them and then preview them on the preview screen. This window up here has multiple tabs down here. Project Media, Explorer, Transitions, Video Effects, and Media Generators. All of these tabs have different effects and some are more important than others. I'll run over all of these and I'll show you which ones I use. Now moving on, what I like to do is resize all of my windows. As you can see, you have your timeline window down here, which will display all your layers and clips. Right now, that has enough room for about 7 or 8 layers, which we won't need if you're just learning Sony Vegas. You'll only need maximum about 3 or 4. So we can go and move up and then shrink that down to about there. You can get the size if you right click and go insert video track, and there's one track. So we have enough room currently for about 3 layers, so that's good. Now, with your preview screen, you may want it bigger than this. So you can go ahead and drag this across until you think it's big enough for you. But keep in mind, all your video effects are over here, and the further you move this across, the less room you'll have for all of this. So now moving on to these tabs. We'll start off with the video effects tab. In here, we've got all these different effects in categories which appear on the left. Once you click on a category, all of the effects for that will pop up on the right. If you hold your mouse over an effect, it'll show a quick preview of it in comparison to a normal standard image. This is very useful for finding things you're looking for. So to apply an effect, you need to have a clip in your timeline. Right now I've just inserted one of my old YouTube templates. You can do this by just going and click and dragging it in. You can also select clips by going to your explorer and selecting them through your folders. I find it easy to just drag and drop them in. Now to apply an effect, all you need to do is find the effect that you want, click and drag it onto your clip, and as you can see, it applies it. Once you have put an effect on your clip, a video event FX box will pop up. This will have all the editable options for that effect. So as you can see, we've got intensity, focus, and you can just change these to get a different look. So once you're happy, you can just go ahead and click the X. To edit existing effects, or to delete effects, you can click down here in the event effects, which is the little green cross looking thing. You can either just untick the effects to temporarily turn them off, or you can fully delete them by pressing the remove selected plugin option. You can also add more effects by clicking on the plugin chain. Or again, you can just drag more effects in. To cancel all current effects on a layer or in a clip, you can just right click and go bypass all, which will temporarily turn them all off. You can enable them all to turn them back on or you can delete them all to totally delete them. You can also apply effects to the whole layer which will affect all the videos on that current layer. The next tab I'll be covering is the transitions tab. Transitions are important to really make your video stand out. If you've just got cut transitions or fade transitions throughout your whole video, it may get a bit boring for the audience. So what you can do, once you've got two clips selected, all you need to do is drag them over each other, and it will create this cross-looking thing. 
Right now, all we have is a crossfade. It's hard to notice on the same clip, but as you can see, about halfway, it's halfway between each video. So you can see the start of the next video appearing on the end of the second video. To apply a different transition, all we need to do is go through our categories here and apply a different effect and drag it onto the transition. Again, the video event FX box will pop up. Here we can change all the values. So as you can see, if we go frame by frame, this pretty much wipes everything out and then fades in the next clip. We can change things such as the color, the vertical diffusion, and the horizontal diffusion. Some effects and transitions will have a lot more editable features than others. If you're after some really nice transitions, a good pack to have is the new blue effect. This plugin really creates nice effects and transitions for your videos. I definitely recommend checking it out. Finally, the last tab that I'll show you is the Media Generators tab. This is very useful if you just want to create, say, basic credits. All you need to do is drag the credits in, and then the editable box will pop up. Here you can change the title text by just double clicking, and then you can change every single text under it. If you close out of here, and you figure out you want to keep editing, all you need to do is click the icon in the top right hand corner, which is the generated media. It will open up your video media generators tab again, and you can continue editing. This same thing applies for text. To apply a text to a video layer, you can either just go through the Media Generators tab, or you can right click and go Insert Text Media. Here you can type whatever you want, and then you can adjust the placement, properties, and effects such as Glow. If you want to continue editing your text, all you need to do is click the same icon and it will come back up. If you want to duplicate or copy layers, all you need to do is right click and go duplicate track. You can also click and hold control and drag to duplicate a video. Another type of transition is a fade transition. All you need to do is go into the top corners of your video until you see your cursor change. Then just click and drag inwards and it will have a fade offset marker. As you can see my fade offset now is 3.23 seconds. You can adjust this to your liking and then do it for both sides, so now it has a nice fade in and fade out. The final thing that I'll take you through is rendering. It is important to have good rendering settings for any type of video that you're creating. So to render your clip, go File, Render As. Choose where you want to render it. I'll just render it to my desktop, and then choose your file name. Then you have your save as type. I recommend doing AVI or MOV. These are probably the best quality rendering you can get. Now I like to render my videos at uncompressed. This way I get the best possible quality I can get. An important option here is this render loop region only. What this means, if you put your mouse above your timeline here, in this blank spot, your cursor will change to a single arrow with a double headed arrow next to it. What you can do is click and drag, and this loop region will appear. It's a grey line with two yellow arrows either side. This is your render region, or your loop region. You can drag these to each side of your clip, and then when you go to File, Render As, if you click Render Loop Region Only, it will only render between those two points and nothing else. So this is important if you just want to do a test render of a certain effect, so you don't need to render your whole video over and over again, you can only render that little part. So I'll just go back to AVI and Uncompressed. Now if we go to Custom, you can change your frame size, frame rate, and everything here. I'm not going to run through all of this in this tutorial because it might take a bit too long. There will be a rendering tutorial which I'll put the link to in the description of this video. So watch out for that rendering tutorial coming up, and I'll show you how to compress a video as well. If you have any questions or comments, you can use my email provided, or you can leave a comment below. I read every message I get in every comment, and I'll reply to any relevant ones. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.